What is up, bro? Uh, can you hear me, bro? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool, cool, cool. My man, How's Ace, asking a question. Um, hey, Ace, I got, I got to come back to that question, bro, when I when we talk about um, actually shooting like uh, football games. But I'm doing good, bro. I can't complain. Mm-hmm. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm in the crib. I just got home from the shoot. So, um, just coming in here and ready to get on this live and talk. I was legit just thinking of stuff um, that came to mind um, that I want to bring up. So, looking forward to it. Sure. What, what you want to get into? I mean, I know this is not our first time. So, I mean, we can, if anyone wants to kind of get to know us personally, they have to go into some older lives because I want to just get that into, <laughs> like, you know, the, the yeah. meat of it all. I mean, shoot, the one that came to mind, like, minutes before uh, we jumped on here was just the power of conversation, Mm -hmm. Um, how important it is that us as creatives have to keep um, empowering each other, you know, having conversations, talking to each other, all those different things, because, like, I had a conversation with my guy Keys and, or Mm Key and, um, and Google, um, there's a guy okay, named Google. Um, his, his tag is uh, Google is human. Uh-huh. And uh, I met him a couple weeks ago through my guy, Keith. And that conversation has, like, made an impact on how I move out here right now. Like, one of the main points was just – and, you know, you tell yourself that these type of things time and time again, but it's like mm-hmm. we're here because we belong here. Like, we're here to provide value. We're here to grow. Yeah. We're here to, you know, do the right things. And you have to move like that when you're in these spaces with different people. And so um, since that conversation, I've kind of shifted how I have to approach things. Like, I can't I can't just be a fly on the wall in the room. I need yeah. to introduce myself to people regardless of where I'm at. Yeah. Like, And I, I used to, like, toe that line between, like, all right, I may not say anything. I'm going to just see if they see my work, this and that. Yeah. But it's like, nah, that's all cool, but you still have to show up and show out, you know, in more ways than one. So shout out to them because that conversation definitely has made an impact just in the last week, two weeks. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so you said that conversation just, like, sparked that moment. is like, yo, the power of communication and, like, talk creativity. I guess that kind of goes into towards you being traveling from where you were originally in uh, what, Minnesota to L.A., and then moving to LA, you couldn't be that fly on the wall because now, I mean, you know, a whole new world, like, you know, starting off fresh. It's almost like, hey, kind of, I mean, your previous experience, you know, helped you out, but it's like now you still got to go get it like you're fresh out, like you just picked up the camera, you know. So how has that been, like, you know, going off of that point of saying, hey, let's network, let's talk, let's see who we can, you know, work with? It's been amazing, man. Like, it's it hits you and it's real once you – once you start living in your purpose and living in mm-hmm. having faith and all those different things, because bro, and I tell you, I didn't have a plan. Like I made this move off of faith and off mm-hmm. of just knowing that this was the next move I had to make. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I touched down, like I'm telling you, as soon as I touched down, opportunities started coming. Um, within the first few days of being here, I ended up meeting famous Lowe's. And mm-hmm. connected with him and a group of people, um, Cookie, Evan, some other people out there. And I'm talking about in two or three days, I already had opportunities to shoot stuff and, and get paid for it. So um, you can't script that, you know, mm-hmm. like you can't just be like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like, obviously, I can only control what I can control. Right. Um, I've been applying for a whole bunch of like different jobs. I've been not accepting certain jobs. Like I got accepted for a few jobs where. I just knew the way, the the trajectory I wanted to go in, if I accepted this job, it wouldn't allow me to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn some things down that were still, you know, could have been potential good things to do. But long story short, I just been trusting, trusting in God, trusting in Mm -hmm. um, just the path that I'm on. And and things have just been revealing to me one after the other, bro. Like Cali is, is definitely a place to be. Every day I wake up and there's opportunity out here. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to maximize it. 
I get I get asked the question all the time about like, hey, I'm a new photographer, I'm a new this, I'm a new creative. How do I put myself out there? And like, I guess what would be one of your strategies to kind of go in towards saying, hey, let me get myself out there. Because like you said, I mean, opportunities coming right to you, but in the sense of like, hey, um, it might be a dry spell, or it might, you know, it might be a moment where it's like, hey, I still need to be able to put in action because everything you know you have to do something to get something you know so what would be like one of those things to say hey i'm a new creative trying to get into it you know what's that like yeah man i tell people this and there's another good story right i tell people this all the time bro it doesn't matter how good you think you are Mm -hmm. you should be trying to create you know wherever you're allowed to so Mm -hmm. by that i mean um i just came from shooting in the nfl right Mm -hmm. I, I shot in the NFL the last five years. I got here, and one of my first gigs was shooting high school football and little league football. <laughs> and I didn't shy away from it. Right. It was with Lax, uh, Lax Rat. Shout out to them as well. Yeah. That was the opportunity that presented itself. It was a good opportunity. It was in the, way, mm-hmm. the direction I'm trying to go, and I took that opportunity. So mm-hmm. regardless of how high I go from shooting, you know, being at a Super Bowl, shooting pro, multiple Pro Bowls, shooting NFL, shooting NBA, all these different things, it doesn't matter what level it is. I'm still willing to come and provide right. value. And people, I don't know if I'm on the right topic or not, but, like, I think a lot of photographers and, and just people in general, they look at their gifts and their creation and all of that as what can they, what can they do for them, right? Mm-hmm. It's really what can we do for others, right? So mm-hmm. I always tell people, like, okay, I'm where I am to provide value to whoever I can provide value right. to. If it, it like you're in back in, in a DMV, but when you were out here, like you were able to sh- create some content with, with me and that helped yeah. me out, you know? So wherever you are working on being the best you can be and providing value to those around you mm-hmm. is going to put you on the map because you never know who's to the left and to the right of you, who's in front of you, who's in behind, who's behind you and just sparking up conversations, just providing value. Those are the ways you get your name out there. It's not mm-hmm. about, focusing on, I need to get to the NFL, I need to get to the NBA. Because what if you're at the local Little League game and that's, I'm just throwing names out there, that's LeBron's daughter or that's LeBron's son or that's, you know, whoever's child. Mm -hmm. And now, or they're even coaching, like, you know, rest in peace to Kobe, but he was coaching his daughter, you know. And so you pulling up to an AAU um, game could turn out to be something great, you know. so. Um, just focus on providing value in any space you can get into. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because that was – I wanted to bring that up as in saying you shot NFL but also shooting, you know, high school, little league. I mean, it's just – this is one of the things, like, when you talk about sports photography and, like, kind of transition into, like, that kind of conversation. It's like, hey, you don't need to – you know, hey, I need to have experience at shooting the NFL. No. If you can shoot your high school football game tomorrow – you know, it takes Wednesday. If you can go out there and shoot your high school football game tomorrow, no matter what league, football is going to be the same football as it is in the league. So it's like, hey, if you're not able to create fire pitches at that level, then, you know, what was the chance of you creating fire images or networking or whatnot at a bigger level? So, like, going off of what you said is that, hey, you know, going and doing 110 where you are right now, the present, because that's going to be able to, like, you know, differentiate you, um, you know, from yesterday, I would say. Because, like you said, you know, you never know who's going to be there. You never know who's going to be able to, uh, you know, have that network. Because, you know, in the world of networking, it's like, hey, you don't know who's, you know, little son might be playing the game who's actually, you know, managing LeBron James's account. <laughs> like, hey, let me connect you with this. And then you never know, like, you know, even if it's family members or, you know, um, I just shot um, – my little cousin had a birthday party, um, turn on one. You know, I didn't get paid for it. It was one of the things, like, hey, I'm just coming to the show. I'm going to, you know, take pictures regardless. But it's saying, hey, you know, where, you know, am I going 110 at that birthday party the same as I would do for a client that's in the NFL or whatever. It's saying, hey, boom, let me just put 110. Let me try some new ideas. Let me try to, you know, um, better my settings and all that. So it's like, hey, where does that look like? you know, in regards to going 110. So, I mean, I love that you brought it up because I've shot high school. I've shot high school sports all the time. I've shot people that say, hey, you, they might not ever make it to the NFL, but here they are. I'm able to, you know, use that as a work experience in myself too. Right. I see uh, Dirty Roots ask the question, often you get to be more creative in that setting. Yeah. I'm going to 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll speak on that. Yeah, yeah, so so it was kind of what you were just saying too, but yeah, um, I was gonna say right. So like I said again, I worked in the NFL for five years. I never shot, you know, in the locker room, pregame, those type mm-hmm. of things, right? That was just something that, for what I was shooting, it didn't come across my path, right? Yeah. But I could probably go to a team tomorrow, in a high school team, right? Tomorrow or this Friday. And be in their locker room, getting practice, shooting in the locker room, getting mm-hmm. them prepared for the game, um, covering the coaches' pregame speech, all those different things. And like, like, like it was stated, like, yes, you can be more creative in these spaces. I would say it's less pressure as well, and it just yeah. gives you an opportunity to get those reps in. When I was shooting little league football, like, it's getting me back in the reps of panning yeah. up and down the field, you know, because I was shooting video for that. But, like, yeah. you know, panning up and down the field, zooming in, I mean, like you said, all of that is going to be the same thing for the most part. Yeah. As you get higher, it gets faster. But other than that, it's the same game, you know. So I, I know you went from the Vikings, but you, you went to L.A. without being on a team, but still able to shoot at the SoFi Stadium. How? Uh, just tell me, just drop some gems. You told me a little bit about it, but just tell me your experiences just shooting there. Man, uh, SoFi Stadium is amazing. Uh, coming from Minnesota, working there and, and seeing the U.S. Bank Stadium, I got there the year after it was built. So mm-hmm. um, seeing how amazing that stadium was, electric energy in there, all of those different mm-hmm. things, state of the art, and then to come to SoFi and see that stadium, it's like, wow. Um, mm-hmm. They did an amazing job with it. And as far as just like the opportunity, it's just staying connected. Like when I got out here, I started reaching out to people letting people know, I'm, hey, I'm here. If there's ever an opportunity, I'd love to get involved. And, you know, long story short, I got a call, and I got brought on to, to shoot. I don't know how, how long that'll be, but like I said, I'm focusing on providing value, yeah. doing the best I can, whoever reaches out to me. That's the other thing about freelance, right, is, like, you could be doing one thing today and a whole other, another thing tomorrow. So, right. um, yeah, I just I would just say, Network with people, reach out, let people follow up with people. That's mm-hmm. something that I used to feel. Um, I I used to feel like I was annoying people, and and that was another mm-hmm. part of the conversation where it's like, excuse, me, you have to follow up with people consistently. Sometimes they don't forget about you, or they don't like not want to work with you. They just forget, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's important to keep reaching out to people, um, keep showing up, and still do your own thing in the meantime, right? Because mm-hmm. on Instagram, right, on these different platforms, LinkedIn. All, like we talked about LinkedIn. We we should talk about that more. But like, no, we do. Oh, go ahead. I was about to say, no, by yeah, just cre- creating your content, people see that consistency. People see mm-hmm. that quality, and you're going to be on their mind. So when things come up, that's an opportunity to be mm-hmm. to be presented to you. You know, just by continuing to do what you're doing. Just off of that point of that being consistent and just creating content, or just being able to create content on your own too, because I think it's two ways. Yes, you create content, whether it's a paid gig or, you know, you get the opportunity to shoot something, but then you have the opportunity to create, you know, stuff on your own, just having fun. Like, hey, you might call up a friend and say, hey, this is, you know, this is shoot, you know, and then being able to say, hey, that is consistency that people see on LinkedIn or, or social media in some way. It's like, hmm, okay, Kev's working. Oh, hey, Travis is working. But they don't know behind the scenes that, hey, for the last five posts, I didn't get paid at all for this or, Hey, this is, this is just free events. or Hey, I just reached out one, one thing, but like you said, on LinkedIn or on Instagram, on Twitter, it's like, okay, cool. Now that I sound, I saw their work so much that, Hey, when I do get the opportunity, I am going to reach out. And the thing is people may not comment on your post or say good job every time you post. Like that's, I mean, that's just life. That's just being human nature. But the thing is, you never, you never, um, there's a feeling of like when you a year goes by, it's like Kevin, I've been watching you over the last year. I'm like, yep. wow, I, I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But it's like, you know, I wasn't banking on their validation to keep me going or to say, mm-hmm. hey, because this person or because people aren't saying, you know, good job, I'm gonna stop working. So like that's is that that's that sign to be like, hey, keep pushing, keep working. You never know who's watching. Because the thing is, mm-hmm. someone may be watching you for two, three years before they say something. And that might be the decision that changes your whole life. And then, right. but they're able to just have, you know, work in that mindset to say, hey, you know, I'm going to keep working because first of all, like you said, your passion, your purpose, this is something I was called to do. And I'm going to work on it because I was called to do personally and, you know, intrinsically 
in a way to say, hey, I'm going to work on this for myself or, you know, because this is my purpose. And then outwardly, it's like, hey, people love it. People want to work with you. People want to, you know, help you along the way. And I think that's the, the beauty of it because now you've been consistent for over, you know, three months, two weeks, a year. And now people want to, you know, ride for you and say, hey, Kevin, I had this opportunity for here. Oh, I'm, I'm going to just throw a like your way just because, you know. So that's why I've seen, like, more of that, that networking side in addition with you working because you can network all you want, but if you don't have some of the, the evidence or the work to continue to, like, back that up, you know, where do you go? So it's like um, going off of that, I want to go into LinkedIn. Like, I think for starters, the conversation started on that is that we saw Instagram <laughs> was wiped out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Instagram was wiped out for like a day. I th- I think that's been a hot topic. Um, I will ask first of all, how do you use lot utilize LinkedIn, and and being a creative? Yeah, um, yeah. To start off with Instagram being shut down, bro. <laughs> like it was an interesting time, but it it shows you how one mm-hmm. it's important to diversify your content, um, right. diverse di- diversify where your content is being seen. Because mm-hmm. there's different people on different platforms, and it can be seen differently, right, mm-hmm. from who it's being seen by on, on what platform. So on LinkedIn, um, I've started to post more content on there. Um, right now, it's been mostly whatever I post on Instagram, I post on Facebook, I post on mm-hmm. LinkedIn type thing. But I'm working on, in, in the coming weeks and months, you're going to see more content specifically for LinkedIn or with LinkedIn in mind. Mm-hmm. Um up until this point, I've used LinkedIn to to search for names, search for jobs, search mm-hmm. for you know job titles, because there's people out there that work for these different companies that you can see exactly who they are and what they do at mm-hmm. whatever company. You know, so if you want to get to Netflix, if you want to get to HBO, if you want to get to mm-hmm. you know any sports team, you can see exactly who it is and what they do. Mm-hmm. And all it takes is connecting with them if they re- connect back with you it's an opportunity to connect right there and, and discuss things. So um, that's how I've used it in the past. Yeah. How, how uh, what do you, you brought up like content tailored towards LinkedIn. What does that look like in regards to like what you're doing? Like what would be that, you know, what you have in mind in regards to that? So, yeah, I, I'm still thinking about that. But like one thing is I just saw on LinkedIn that uh, they have like a story platform, kind of like how mm-hmm. Instagram does and Snapchat and all that. And they have a daily question thing. And, like, one of the oh. questions was, who is your role model? And mm-hmm. then you can describe who your role model is and, and go into detail if you want. But more just, like, the business side of things, whether it's talking about the work I'm doing and how that mm-hmm. can be of value to people um, and just updating them on projects I'm working on or, or like, new gear or things like that. Mm-hmm. I want to keep it towards the photography and content community, but mm-hmm. also just professionalism in general. Um I think it's it's an opportunity to like kind of teach people, but also mm-hmm. just start conversations. Right. And and I would want to tailor it towards the type of stuff I'm doing. Um, so I'm kind of playing around with some ideas right now. Yeah. Still haven't had enough time to brainstorm, but mm-hmm. in the coming weeks, I'm I'm planning on kind of locking in on that and learning more about what I should put on LinkedIn. Right. I yeah. wonder how many people like that's watching now actually are, are active on their LinkedIn because. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in the in the piece of it all, I saw that a lot of people didn't know what to do. And then, you know, or if you are in the freelance position or you are in the the space where, hey, you need to be able to, you know, show your, you know, show your, your work, or, you know, have a portfolio base. LinkedIn is a as an opportunity for that. And, uh, you know, with that being said, um, I've also seen the, you know, just adding in project base. Um, you know, post and then being able to say, hey, I want to post this on LinkedIn because it shows a little bit of value to that person. Like you said, like that brand manager or that CEO who's saying like, hey, maybe this could work for my company or, you know, you know, this person could actually, you know, you know, do some good to my company. And like, that's kind of like the tailoring, you know, going off of what you said, it was like, hey, my friends are on Instagram. Those are probably, you know, younger than me or, you know, just by the same age or, you know, actually just like me. They're not going to be able to make uh, – so one of my friends called it decision makers. The decision makers are on LinkedIn. So it's like, hey, how do we tailor that content? How do we tailor the, the language to them in a way that says, hey, 
Um, this is what I've been working on. I would love to work with more brands or I would love to make more content for people such as this, yada, yada, yada. And then they see it. And then one thing I love about the LinkedIn uh, algorithm is that once someone likes your post or comments on your post, it shares it automatically to their feed or to their followers or to other people they're connected with. So unlike LinkedIn, um, Instagram, once somebody likes it, like their friends or their followers don't know about that post mm -hmm. for the, unless they share it or unless they like, you know, they share it to their story. But LinkedIn, it's like automatically, once they like it, it goes to their followers. So you automatically get engagement double times, you know, the roof uh, just by posting on LinkedIn. So I, I love it. I actually, yeah. I love it. And uh, another thing, like the, the shoot I just came from was um, through LinkedIn, right? Because mm -hmm. I posted the same video I posted on Instagram, just letting people know that I had moved out to L.A. Mm -hmm. And one of my former coworkers reached out to me and said, hey, which is, you know, a, um, an older coworker that wouldn't probably be on LinkedIn or I mean on, on Instagram as mm -hmm. often. Right. And so she reached out and just said, hey, if there's anything I can do to help, I know a few people, blah, 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 that are in California. And that's how today's morning gig happened was was oh, through wow. LinkedIn. So if I didn't post it there, I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity I did today. I can't talk on it right now, but like it was an amazing experience and could lead to so much more. So it's like, you know, it's things like that where you never know who's watching or where they're watching. So right. you got to post, you know, diversify your content for sure. No, that's bad. Congratulations on that. Appreciate it. Appreciate that's it. That's tough. No, and um, I want to transition a little bit towards um, the sports side and being a photographer that wants to get into sports. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, I've been a heavy conversation starter for us as in say, hey, how do we even get to the NFL? And I know we mm -hmm. spoke on like, you know, the little league process and, you know, being able to start off on just any type of sports. But like, what would be your tips in regards to saying, hey, I do have goals of shooting in the NFL right. or I have goals to shoot in the NBA. What does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I can speak from experience just the fact that, like, people don't know this, but – well, some people do, but I didn't get – my first opportunity with the with the NFL was with the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. And that first year, that was in 2016, I applied to work with the Seahawks. I applied to work with the Vikings. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it for the Vikings. I got to – interview rounds and didn't make it right mm -hmm. um but they said you know try again next year like you know do something this year to work on your portfolio mm -hmm. this this and that and the seahawks also didn't give me the opportunity at first i got to the final round i got there and they basically said no but because of my interview i got an opportunity to do public relations which is oh, something man. i never knew how to do or what it was about but it was an opportunity in the league and i took it right and that ended up leading to doing other things and staying for the full season and so forth and so on. But saying all that to say is what I learned in that first year to the second year that got me the opportunity with the Vikings the second time around was I created a website, um, okay. having my own .com, you know, website that you can go to, see yeah. my portfolio, see my content outside of, of, of social media, right? Mm -hmm. That was one thing. Um, on your Instagram if you're using your Instagram, like make sure it's professional. Don't mm -hmm. ma don't make it private for one thing, because some people may see your content or want to see your content. Right. And if it's private, they can't see it. Right. So uh, don't make it private. Make it professional. You know, I think it's important to show both of your personal side of who you are as well as your work. Some mm -hmm. people just keep it as straight portfolio. But what I will say is like when you're getting hired, it's not just based off of how good you are, how talented mm -hmm. you are, or even how good your work is as a photographer, because um, it takes personality. It takes being able to conduct yourself in the right manners. Um, sometimes it's not even about taking the photos. It's about, you know, working with certain people and just being able to handle yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of that goes into it. But again, for, for photographers starting out to get to where we are now is just put in the work, um, reach out to local community, you know, local community sports, reach out to high school coaches, college coaches, not even the coaches, but like the, the teams, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of different ways, right? Exactly. Um, so just just finding where you can provide value around where you are. And mm -hmm. um, if you want to work with athletes directly, reach out to these 
these players in their DMs, like send them a DM. Mm-hmm. But the part about that is it's one thing to just reach out and say, hey, I want to shoot for you, but you mm-hmm. have nothing to show for. That's why it's important to shoot these different things because you can always be getting better. And as yeah. you're getting better, like if you sh- the last time you shot a college game was two years ago and you had two years to shoot all this other stuff, but you didn't because it wasn't at that level or higher. Mm-hmm. It's like you're missing out on a large opportunity to get work in and get reps in. Mm-hmm. And so you can shoot a, high, a little league game and have dope colors, dope shots, yeah. get some action, all of that. And that's going to be better because it still shows that you're working mm-hmm. and shows you're getting better and all that. So um, when you hit up a player then and say, hey, like this is my most recent work, mm-hmm. and they can see something, or if there's a player or it's a job, whatever, like those are important to um, – to always keep working and, and, and just, you know, continue putting out content. That's what I would say. I got you. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because uh, mm-hmm. you asked a little bit about, like, you know, reaching out. And I think I want to be able to, like, kind of show a little example. And I'll give my example, but I would say, you know, what would you say, whether it's an email or if you popping up on a coach or, like, you know, you wanted to reach out to someone, what would – you say or what would be in that message i mean it doesn't have to be the exact message but like hey what would become some of the key points when reaching out to someone saying hey um i want to potentially do some work whether it's free or whether it's paid etc so what, i mean putting you on the spot yeah is, is this saying for me right now or from a, a photographer starting uh, out or trying to get work i'll say starting out um i'll say both let me do both because okay. starting out and then you know where you are right now yeah For somebody starting out, I mean, they're mostly similar to each other, but I always Mm -hmm. say provide value, right? Yeah. People say collaborate sometimes, things like that, which collaborate is cool too, but if you're really, like, looking for an opportunity, um, like, I don't know how to word it, but basically I'm going to just say off providing value, right? So I would say, hey, my name is so-and-so. If you've seen their work or seen what they're doing and you know exactly what you want to do with them, Mm-hmm. then say that. Like, for example, me out here, I want to do more behind-the-scenes work on, yeah. you know, movie sets or commercials or comedy skits, mm-hmm. all those different things. So when I'm reaching out to somebody, I would say, hey, my name is Travis Ellison. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a photographer in the area. Um, if you have any upcoming events or skits or anything going on or any projects that I could be, you know, provide value to, I shoot behind-the-scenes or I shoot photography, I shoot videography, blah, 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 whatever it is, and just ask for the opportunity. Sometimes it's just saying, hey, if you have 10, 20 minutes to chat with me, you know, mm-hmm. this coming week or whatever. Um, so it's different ways. And, and I don't know if you posted this. One of my friends, Key again, he posted this a while back. He said, sometimes you meet creatives or you meet people, right? And mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're going to work with them today or tomorrow or next week. Yeah. It may be two, three years from now to the time mm-hmm. you actually work together. But take that time now to at least introduce yourself. Right. And just start that connection. And I tell people all the time, like, if you reach out, stay in touch. Like, people reach out sometimes, like, hey, I want to come work with you, or how can I get into a game? And it's like, mm-hmm. it's not that easy, because I'm out here, you know, skidding by to get in. Like, it's not right. that easy, right? But right. Um, by consistency and doing the things that if I give you, like, hey, shoot this or do this in the meantime, I can see your work, and I can then say, hey, this is the opportunity that came up. I'm yeah. always posting job stuff and all that, but I'm going on a yeah. tangent. But no, you're good. I don't know if they answered the question. <laughs> no, it did. It did. And like you said, it's so many different ways, but I think there's certain different points that you have to cover in each email when reaching out, no matter what stage we are at. Because like you said, added value. And then, you know, what is the ask? You know, whether it is, hey, I'm just reaching out to just introduce myself or saying, hey, I do see something that, you know, I can add value to hey, this is my ask. So it's like, hey, what does it look like for the future events? So it's like, mm-hmm. um, there's multiple way times that I've reached out and they say, hey, we're not, um, we don't need your services or at the moment, even if I say for free. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm trying to work for free and y'all still not, you know, accepting my services. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever, you know, kind of keep it rolling. But like we said, keeping in touch, whether it is so following them on social media. Like, I don't know, this is a pet peeve of mine sometimes, but like sometimes people reach out to me and i know i'm i'm only at my level of, of of work but it's like yo you don't even follow me you don't even show any love so it's like you know how important am i to you 
and I can only imagine that to someone else and say, hey, to be able to add in your, your email and say, hey, I've seen the work you've done. I've noticed your work over the past. I feel like I add value in this. Like, you know, keep doing the good work you're doing, but hey, I'm here to help you along the way. And then to return, there is a, fit, you know, win-win for both of us. You get, you know, my services and I get more experience. So it's like, I know, you know, um, I started off, you know, years ago, D, um, emailing and DMing all the DJs and saying, hey, I just want to provide content for you. I'm, I'm a new photographer, yada, yada, yada. Just let me shoot. Now they're like, okay, cool. I never had BTS before. Okay, this might be something cool. Okay, and then, like, you know, going off of that, you're building your portfolio, you're building your network base, um, you bring in, um, you know, just more experience within the whole room of photography. So just going off of that is, like, it shows so much how much uh, important it is to network but also come in and show the work because now say, hey, um, depending on where you are, say, hey, now I am at a level that say, hey, I do think I should be able to um, charge for this. The first one might be free or say, hey, I would love to work out something where it's mutually beneficial for both of us. So um, I think that reaching out process is is hard because I would say your first one might not be <laughs> the one that gets it done. You know, like I've said, I've, I, I can tell my note, I say I, over 500 at least messages over my course of my career you know, sending messages, sending people. I know you could probably say the same, like there's people that you try to reach out to or whatever. Um, so as sending those emails, sending those messages. And one thing, um, I'm going to drop a little tip that I'm doing this year that I'm going to send holla, uh, happy holiday thank you cards or cards um, to my network or people. So like if they work in an office, I'm going to send it to the office and, like, CC them and say, hey, thank you, da, da, da. Because, you know, I've met people at the NFL Hall of Fame. I met the photographer for the San Francisco. I was like, hey, I'm going to just, you know, send it to his office. You know, I don't need his actual address. But, hey, I'm going to CC him and just try to, like, kind of network that way because, like you said, keeping in touch, that's one of the ways. So even if it's an e uh, email, say, hey, happy holidays. I just wanted to check in and to say hello. You know, that's just another way to say, hey, I'm going to keep – you know, you in the back of my head, you know what, Kevin did send me a thank you card or, a, you know, so-and-so last month. Hey, Kevin, you free? And that has happened to me. It's, I mean, for sure, saying, hey, um, I, I like, again, someone said, hey, we don't need your services right now. Hey, this is a friendly check-in. Just hope all is well. I see you guys added a new restaurant to your building, you know, just checking in. <laughs> right, you know, but it's like being able to be engaging in that it just shows like, hey, you are paying attention. You have the tenacity to kind of move forward and, and keep at it because, you know, so many people reach out, but they, you know the trail goes goes cold. Like it's hard to get that one position off the first email or for the first phone call. Don't forget, we're cold calling out here. So mm -hmm. this now, I say this is the difference between being a creative. Not the difference, but like. The, the creative side of this and then hey we're, this is where emails come in this is where kind of like your sales pitch who are you if you only your 15 second elevator pitch do you have that down you might be able to take some fire pictures but you can't explain yourself in 15 seconds you know you might never get an opportunity so yeah. <laughs> oh, you only you only said that because I said I wasn't dancing on TikTok the network I'll tell you that much <laughs> Yeah. Um, but also like just to add on to what you said about when people reach out for opportunities, you have to realize what your intentions are because mm -hmm. people can sense intentions. Like mm -hmm. some people can, some people can't, but from at least from my experience I can sense it. And like your goal shouldn't be can you help me get into the league so I can basically say that I shot a game or like for mm -hmm. their like again, it's about what can you do for somebody else. Because for mm -hmm. example, there may be opportunity to work in the NFL where you're just shooting sponsorship and you're just shooting outside of the arena, you know, or the mm -hmm. stadium. So you're not even shooting the game. Are you willing to do that for however long period of time until that one day where they do need additional help and you're able to get down on the field? You know, like it's things like that. My internship with the Vikings, I wasn't necessarily like the game action photographer my first year. 
-hmm. at the end of games is when I got to shoot game, you know, game shots. Most of it, I was shooting like sideline interaction, fans, different things like that. It wasn't every, every down, every, every play. But now you look years later, I'm, I have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's coming in and doing what you can, you know, in that time period and, and just not reaching out to people for a handout or reaching out to them for your, your one up. So you can mm -hmm. post on Instagram, you can post and say, Hey, look what I did. Yeah. Like some of the stuff I've done, I haven't even talked about. And may, unless it's like somebody like you that we're cool and we see each other in person, we have these conversations. Yeah. The, the the majority of the public is not going to know that certain things even happen, you know, and I'm yeah. not going to sit there and be like, Oh, like make sure they see it, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. So yeah, just having good intentions is important. Yeah. Cause I think, I mean, that's one thing I wanted to show and be able to have this opportunity to talk to you about because you know, people may see that, Hey, I, you know, shot this NFL game, but like, yo, um, this is where I'm at now because I've done this behind the scenes work, you know? And then just being able to say, like, hey, reaching out, I've been on LinkedIn heavy. I've been on, mm -hmm. you know, talking to you, you know, trying to talk to, you know, people that can mentor you. But mentoring doesn't mean that they're just older than you or they're just better than you. It's just, hey, they might have experiences that I've never had. So reaching out to you, I mean, I think it was, what, been two years now or a year and a half or so? Because yeah. it was last. I met, I, I met you a while ago through Instagram, but then – um we kind of just ran into each other down in Miami for the Super Bowl and just saying, like, hey, you know, you know, picking your brain and saying, hey, what does the NFL world look like? You know, having a conversation that we're having today. So um, it's definitely been helpful just being able to reach out. Um, those same tactics of reaching out to, like, you know, for opportunity is the same way I would reach out to, you know, a peer of mine saying, hey, I would love, you know, that pick your brain type of conversation. But at the same time, it's like, hey, that's that's real. And then there is some people say, hey, you know, even in that pick your brain conversation, you still want to be able to, um, you know, add value. Say, like, hey, how can I add value as a, as a young buck that's just trying to start? You know, so I see we have some questions down here. Um, I know Sonny. Uh, can I just tap this? Oh, there. Do you see that question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, have you been adapting networking as many? Uh, Okay, got you. You want to go first on that one question? Um, yeah, for me, for networking, I mean, networking, I do that on, on social media yeah. more than I even do in person. So mm -hmm. um, I just continue to network online, emails, phone calls, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram DMs, you know, LinkedIn, like we said. So in that aspect, I've just continued to do that. Like I said, yeah. when I first got out here, it was literally going to L.A. Fitness Going to the gym, to the bank center, as they call it, uh, and meeting famous lows, and then right. all you know, people in his circle, and providing value. Yeah. And it was that simple. Like, so it doesn't have to be in an event. It doesn't have to be um, mm -hmm. at something specific. Like, you could legit mm -hmm. be going to the grocery store and just talk to somebody. So, anywhere you are, there's an opportunity to network. Have business cards on you. Have, like you said, have your your um your pitch down, and just mm -hmm. you know, wearing your 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 you know your gear like. Things exactly. like that. You never know what might spark a conversation. So, um, yeah. No, nah, I, I mean, you hit a spot on. Um, social media has been my biggest thing. LinkedIn, I mean, there's no limit of, you know, you reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Um, you know, and the thing is, don't move like it's spam. That's why I, I say, like, you don't want to have that, you know, that spam type feel where you're like, okay, this is someone just trying to, you know, get another, you know, one up. But it's like, hey, being able to change their name and the message uh, saying good morning, Sam, rather than just good morning. Like, no, make it personable uh, to the point of saying, hey, I've seen your last post about sports photography. I would love to, you know, spark, you know, you know, uh, reach out to you and talk more about that. Like, those are the conversations and the messages that get responses, you know. Um, like you said, in person, if it is just networking in a grocery store, I'm wearing my T-shirt that says Kevin Art on the front or have my name on the back. So there's, like, always opportunity, your business cards. Um, so I think that's – I mean, we, we covered that in the LinkedIn. So anyone that just got on, you might have to look at this recording and look at what we talked about LinkedIn. Uh, we had a couple more questions here. Let me see. Um, we got a question about pay internships or free internships. Uh, this is a always a touchy conversation in regards to pay versus uh, free. 
Um, go ahead. You want to start? You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Uh, let me see. I would say, let's put it like this. Paid is always more competitive. I'm going to put it like that just for starters. Paid internships are always more competitive. I don't say you don't go for them. I don't say you do go. I mean, of course, try to go for them. But it's saying there's value in each experience. I'm going to just put it like that up front. I've done both. I've done paid. I've done free. And uh, there is as one person brought up to me, like, there's a, uh, there's a, a part of free internships that say, hey, you are privileged enough to have, to go to free internships. Because I know everyone's, um, you know, situation is not the same. So I understand that, hey, there is a privilege to do free internships and still be okay. Like, no, we need to be able to have paid internships for that. But at the same time, I would say, um, doing free internships have, you know, brought so much experience to myself to say, hey, there's a certain level of care that I want to do in that internship to make that that internship so much valuable to me. So it's like, hey, it might just be a mindset switch in between the two rather than just the money aspect. But it's like, hey, what value am I actually gaining from it? Because I might get a paid internship and be like, oh, I'm getting a nice check. I might not, you know, work as hard. You know, so I say there's more of a mindset between the two saying, hey, you might need to be down in the gutter to try to get the most of that free internship rather than a paid because you might be spoiled, you know, with that paid internship. So um, I personally like the free internships because it makes it does separate people in the regards to mindset. Um, I would say that. And sometimes um I see a higher value in free internships because some people don't want those. Some people don't want those at all. Maybe because of financial situations, but because hey, I am willing to do whatever it takes. So if you don't, if you have that mindset, say I'm willing to do whatever it takes to do that paid internship. That means hey, you might have to apply a thousand times for a paid one. Okay, that means you you know you have that whatever it takes mindset. So that's why I'm. My uh, reasoning behind paid versus uh, free. Yeah, now to to add to that, I would say, um, you know, shout out to my mind on sports, my guy Wilson Tarpe Jr. And mm-hmm. uh, when I first started really trying to get serious with photography and all of that, mm-hmm. he took me under his wing and gave me the opportunity to shoot all different sports. I shot the Mystics, mm-hmm. I shot mm-hmm. the women's um, um, Maryland Terps. Um, mm-hmm. DC United, you know, totally. all these different areas. And we, we traveled some and shot. So it's like, that was, you know, a free internship. Yeah. But I can't I can't equate anything else to that because that experience I got from that, the value I got from that, the competent, mm-hmm. confidence I gained from that, um, the relationships that were built, you know, all those different things that happened throughout that time period was, was you know, no money could, could even – compete with that right it, it really mm-hmm. was the start of what i what i've done what i've done and what i've continued to do so that's where it all started for me you know on a professional level and like you said about people don't want the, the free internships right um what i tell people to, or what i would tell people is to focus on the value part right do you see this opportunity as somewhere where you can truly provide value or are you seeing mm-hmm. it as like, hey, I just want to show up and, and do something, right? And that mm-hmm. may be what it needs to be sometimes. But for me, it's like that gives you more of an opportunity to come in and actually do some great things for a company. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always say it's important to to make sure you're not being used either. Like, because free or paid, right? Because a lot of these paid internships, they're not really paying you nothing, mm-hmm. you know? So, so make sure you're getting something out of it, regardless if it's paid or not. Make mm-hmm. sure that you are being able to give value, but you're also receiving value. That doesn't mean you're being highlighted on the front page of, hey, you're working for us, like congratulations, right. but that you're learning things, that you're you're networking with people, and you're continuing to, to grow in the field that you're you're moving towards. Uh, you made a great point on that, like, you know, having your checklist items, like, hey, am I learning? You know, am I, you know, gaining value? Am I networking? Because the thing is, all these internships, we know this is not the end all be all. Like that's the end of the goal. It's like, hey, any like when you were shooting at DC United, you knew, hey, I'm not gonna be shooting DC United for the rest of my life. So it's like, hey, take what you can gain from that, not in a selfish manner, but saying, hey, I am learning, I am trying to grow experience. So it's like, hey, what can I do, you know, in my time here and making the, the you know, 
the best for itself. So yeah, I mean, that's a great point, bro. Uh, I got a couple more que- I got one more question. Uh, let's see, Sunny with another good question. How have you learned the business of photography slash videography? So the creative side of the business. Um, yeah, I kind of. Oh, good. Go ahead. You want me to go? You're the guest, you're the guest sir. Yes, All sir. Right. I would say I've learned a lot by just trial and error, YouTube, asking other photographers, um, mm-hmm. some books as well. And uh, those are ma- the main ways. Like social mm-hmm. media, like a lot of, of people on social media are teaching and so forth. But mm-hmm. yeah, just being a, alert, being aware, asking questions. There's so much that you can learn just by being around things and just asking or paying attention. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I would say in a short way. I'll let you go ahead. Um, yeah, same way. It's funny you said, like, you know, by trial and error, because that was definitely, like, going to be my answer to start it off and say, hey, trial and error. Just because I started my company officially, LLC, like, 2019, but there's certain, like, business stuff that I've learned within like the last two years that I should have done <laughs> October 2019. And it was like, I'm like, wow, because like, you know, making sure your taxes is doing, the, you know, going the right way, how your money's being spent, having a business account versus your, your personal account. I'm like, yo, this is stuff I wish I would have learned right when, you know, 2019 hit. So I'm like, now, okay, I try to share as much as I can on the business side of the being a creative because, you know, when that switch happens of, hey, this is not a hobby anymore. I actually want to make money and make a business out of it. There's a lot more. It's a whole nother learning curve. Like, you learn how to take pictures. You learn how to, you know, shoot video. It was like, okay, uh, you want to make this into a business? Okay, you need this, this, and this now. And now you have to, you know, on flip side, become a student of the business side. So, um, like you said, I have books. Um, I, I had to pick up a book on negotiation. Because now, it, when they flipped to saying, hey, Kev, I want to, you know, I want you to do this, this for me. Now, I'm trying to reach out to other people, and I don't want to make sure I get my worth. So, it's like, hey, I don't know how to negotiate as well as I, I, I would like to. But like, my success rate when reaching out isn't good. Okay, I need to learn how to do that. Because now, you know, it's different from when your friends or your family members say, hey, I always want to take pictures for my birthday. And now you actually want to make some real money. And, you know, now you're negotiating between thousands of dollars or, you know, you know, time spent. So it's, I would say, to keep it short, you know, become a student of the business side because there's so much more uh, to learn on that end. Yeah. And, and lastly, I'll add a couple of things when it comes to, like, being paid or not being paid and so forth. Mm-hmm. Like, and another thing, too, but, like, so with the pay thing, a lot of times I was nervous to even ask for money, right? Like, if it if they didn't bring it up, I wouldn't want to bring it up, you know, those right. type of things. And it's like, sometimes it's as simple as saying, yeah, like, what's your budget? Or, yeah. or you know, how much do you have, you know, how much were you looking to spend on this? Because that starts a conversation of making sure it's known that this is a paid right. thing I'm, I'm looking to do. Nothing wrong with doing free work, but if you are at the point where, no, this is something I want to get paid for, and that's how it should be seen. Like, people mm-hmm. will ask you, oh, do you shoot? And, like, if you don't tell them, like, yeah, you know, my rates are usually this, but what do you have to work mm-hmm. with or whatever, to start that conversation of this is a paid gig, people are willing to pay if you make sure that's known sometimes, right? Some people aren't, mm-hmm. some people are, but they may be willing to pay, but if you're going to give it to them for free, they're going to take that, you know? Um, and then also what I was going to say, too, is, like, as a freelancer now, two things I've realized a lot more is, one, um, travel right now that we're starting to travel and stuff i have to book my own hotel i have to book my own flights yeah, i have yeah. to make sure my scheduling is right for all of that you know so that's interesting and that's been cool to kind of just realize i'm doing that for myself now and yeah. then also um invoices and emails bro i was thinking about this either this morning or last yesterday like bro the amount of invoices and emails because yeah. when you work in a nine to five you get that check every two weeks it hits your account yeah. cool when you're doing it for yourself, you got to make sure you're writing your invoices and sending right. them off. Make yeah. sure you're following up via email, you know, all those type of things. Because if you don't, you're not getting paid. So uh, definitely you're going to have to create that consistency and create that business, you know, mindset. Because if not, you kind of like a fish in a, you know, 
you just stuck in the ocean or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the wording, but yeah. you're stuck if you're not, you know, if you're not thinking about business on the business side. So, nah, that's a fact. Hey, Aero uh, Photography, uh, can you drop that a question in the questions box just so we can keep track of it? And then, kind of to add on before we go into the next question, um, I wanted to bring up. Um, you said something about the invoices. Yes, that's very important because now you got to get paid. And then what was mm. something else you said that I wanted the to The traveling? Uh, like hotels and... Uh, I forgot what it was. I hope it comes back to me. But I, I can't Budget. remember it. I can't remember it. I, I was something really particular, but I couldn't think of it. So I'm going to go to the next question. All right. Um, when should you file for an LLC? That's a good question. It's a really good question. You want to drop on that first? Yeah, so f from my perspective... The year that you well, I would if you're making money and you're make if you want this to be like your full time business or a majority of your business, if you want to start getting tax write offs and all that stuff, mm -hmm. then you know create an LLC as soon as you can. Um, it's also an opportunity to like limit the liability the LLC of of what you would owe. So like for example, if you're on a shoot and something happens and somebody wants to sue you, if it's under that LLC, they can only sue the business. They can't sue your mm -hmm. personal. So that's important. Um, like you said about the bank, you know, getting a separate bank account, credit card, all that stuff for your for your business. You can write off your gas, you know, to a certain extent and not full write offs, but equipment, gas, learning materials. So books and like if you go to a conference, flights, every time I take yeah. a flight, there's something business related, you know, because yeah. I'm always making sure my flights. If I'm going back home, I usually have a meeting. I'm usually going to speak somewhere or I'm doing you know, location scouting, all these different things. So every flight I take is for business because it really mm -hmm. is for business. Like I'm not going nowhere unless I'm going there for some type of business. So all these different ways through your LLC, you're able to, um, you're able to write that stuff off. And then also what I learned was even if you started your LLC and like you said, uh, October, mine was in November, or mm -hmm. mine was in August of the same year, 2019. But in that year that you do it, that full year backtrack to January can be potentially used as your tax write off. So say you just bought a camera in March, but your LLC passed or was official in, in August, you could still write off that, that, um, that camera, you know, so mm -hmm. different things like that. So for the year that you're going to do it, um, that you're going to start, but you do have to track your mileage, track all that stuff. And you want to start getting deductions. So, yeah, um, I think we have, we have to have a, do we have to have a whole nother live in regards to like, the business side of mm -hmm. creativity, uh, the creative side, because there's so much I've learned. Um, to start off my response, I went and found these two books. is Tax-Free Wealth. So it's How to Build Massive Wealth by Permanently Lowering Your Taxes. Um, so this is like an overall, like, it could be for anybody, but I would say it talks a lot about being an entrepreneur and having your own business. So a lot of creatives are entrepreneurs or want to have some type of you know, business or whether it's investing or whatnot. So it talks a lot about entrepreneurship. So this is a good book to read. It's called Tax-Free Wealth. Screenshot. Boom. And then this is a really good book if you really want to, like, kind of know, like, the LLC side of it. It's 475 Tax Deductions for Businesses and Self-Employed Individuals. Um, so that is a little past your step of saying when should you file. But if you're considering filing for an LLC, read these two books and kind of that'll have some clarity before you file your tax, um, file for LLC. And then kind of to break down my answer towards when do you file for LLC, I would say for starters, the debt, like Travis said, the definition of an LLC is to protect yourself um, away from your business or protect yourself in liability. So it's limited liability. So like Travis said, um, for me, it's like, hey, I put money into this game now, like, you know, thousands of dollars, whether it's equipment or whatever. Now it's like, hey, I don't want them to sue me for everything I got, <laughs> all the equipment or, you know, everything, take my house. So it's like, hey, now I'm starting to put money into this and people are, I'm trying to, people are paying me to do services. So now that's, I'm bringing other people inside of it. So if I'm just taking pictures outside of my garden, no one could really sue me. I mean, no one's going to really sue me for just taking pictures out in the garden. But now if I'm shooting a wedding. Now 
either I put my, my personal name down or my business name down for doing the service. So now if something happens at a wedding, they can only sue my company. So that's the reason for founding LLC. So for that and down, like I said, the money aspect, I put so much money into this. I want to protect or I want to be able to save money because now I went to a shoot, like Travis said, to California. I can't have any savings on that. So that's kind of like the reason why you will file for LLC. And then, oh, one more thing. To have your your business, I think, um, officially, you have to have a profit, uh, like a winning, um, profit winning year, one out of three years. So um, if you don't have, if you're taking a loss each year on your LLC, that's considered a hobby. So um, that's kind of where you're able to say, hey, am I am I a hobby yet or am I a, a, a official business? Because you have to have a winning profit, you know, winning year, at least I think one out of three years. Um, I have to check back on the, the accuracy of that. But you have to be able to say, this is not just a hobby. I'm not just trying to save on taxes just because like, you actually have to be good, you know. So you can't have everything as a loss. But, you know, there's um, – you know, reach out to your tax people, um, questions, like Travis said, YouTube, the books I just brought up. Um, I know we have some more questions. Hey, you can drop any questions in the questions box just so we can be able to, um, um, you know, you know, keep uh, track of it. Um, so that's that. Boom. Uh, Travis, I know you answered this question a little bit, so I know I'm going to let you. I answer that real quick. Oh, did it right. yeah. um, did you did you can you read it? Oh, okay. I still see Sonny's question. Uh hold up. This Sonny question go up. Uh so I'm gonna read um this question. It says, Don't know if you answered it already, Travis, why did you leave the league? Why did you uh oh, and what did you gain? most from the experience being in the NFL? So why did you leave and what did you gain the most? Um, Good question. Uh, I haven't really talked about it too much, but honestly, I, I left the league just because it was time for me. Uh, the the mm -hmm. COVID season, you know, COVID, the year of COVID, right, and, and just that season and everything, I had a lot more time at home. Um, I took this entrepreneurship class with Ash Cash, um, and I just learned so much through him about like how obtainable it is to be, you know, to wake up every day, do what you love, provide value and make a living off of it, you know, and, 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 and be happy and all those different things. Right. Um, and just, I had to get out of the structure. It wasn't necessarily leaving the NFL. I just had to get out, the, get out of the structure of, of a nine to five and, and confinement to, just one location. When you're working in the NFL, if you're working for a team, you are stuck there basically, you know, for majority of the year. And um, it's a lot of stuff that goes into it, right? Where, you know, I was missing family events. Not that I won't miss certain things now, but like I was missing certain things and also just not being able to network outside of that area right like we'll travel but we're there and we're gone the next day those type of mm -hmm. things but long story short it was just time for something new for me it was time to bet on myself and really just go for what I wanted because also I had been seeing a lot of ideas happen or content things going on that I personally wanted to do and that I, I you know had pitched um, from here or there or whatever and if things didn't happen it was like okay, that's cool. And I understand like, this isn't my, I'm not running the show here. Right. So you have to do, mm -hmm. you have to bring value where you can. And then outside of that, I started seeing opportunities where I need to do what I want to do for myself. And just really my goal to come to LA was to provide more value to expand outside of just the NFL. Right. I learned a lot in the NFL and now I can use everything I learned and do that in all these other different spaces. Right. Um, and what was the second half of that question? Uh, you, you you just spoke on it. Was just saying, uh, what did you gain the most from um, your experience in the NFL? I mean, it's it's really a it's an experience, man. Like I remember my first time with the Seahawks after the first game, and then coming to the facility the next day, and like seeing the players getting worked on and stuff, and realizing like 
all my life I wanted to play football and play sports, but to be honest, like I'm fine without it. And and mm-hmm. and, and at, at that level, right? And mm-hmm. respectfully saying that, like people don't understand what these guys go through, and and not just the guys, but like you know, in in, in the female leagues as well, WNBA and and all the other sports, like professional athletes go through a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, to become a professional is not easy. And to see what they go through, um, you know, you're appreciative of it. That's one thing. Being able to, you know, fly on a team plane and and all these different things, being on the field for games and stuff, like, you kind of get spoiled to a certain extent, but you also Mm -hmm. appreciate every moment. Like, you, at least I did. I -hmm. appreciated every moment because you don't know when the next time that will happen, you know. Um, So I, I got a lot of experience from it. I wouldn't change it for the world. It was an amazing opportunity and experience. And, um. Yeah, I could go on for days and talk about different stuff, but no, I got you. Yeah. Um, we got another question. Oh, uh, what's our our go to setup? Uh, I'm gonna go first on this one. Mine's mine's uh. I don't know what particular what, but I would just say my favorite setup would be uh my 5D Mark IV with a 70 to 200 2.8. I mean, you can't get no better than that. Um, I want the R3 LV, my, my dream setup. So I'll put it like that. What about you, bro? Um, at this very moment, if I had to go out and shoot with only one camera and one lens, for me, it would be the A9. I mean, sorry, the A1 in the, in the, um, in the 51 two. Oh. Like that setup is lit. <laughs> yeah, um, to be honest with y'all, bro, the, the, the A1 compared to the A9 Mark II, like I was shooting the game on Monday night and, and just shooting with those two cameras, the speed difference with the A1, like not even just like shutter speed and like the frames per second, but like the I camera's internal thing. speed of yeah. like how quickly it reads and writes, how mm-hmm. quickly you can jump through settings. It's like way faster than the A9 II. And the A9 II was supposed to be like the fastest out, you know? And yeah. it's just like, yeah, so uh, it's amazing to see, the, like, the technology and how good it's getting. Like you said, the R3 is coming out or is out now. Yeah. So I think we're in a – I thought about it. I just want to add this right quick. No, I thought about, like, if I could go back, I would have loved to take do photography in high school. But that was, like, early on DSLRs. And mm-hmm. I wonder how different it would have been. Like, would I have had as much passion as I, as I do now if I was shooting on film or if I was shooting on mm. – first versions of DSLRs right. and like slow memory cards and not good lenses and all that, you know, I wonder if I would have kept that up. Cause right. by the time I started doing it, we had Instagram more than like True. Cause back then, yeah. where am I posting my work? Maybe on Facebook, you know, things like that. So uh, I think yeah. we're in a very, this is a great time for like what we're doing because of the technology is great and we have platforms to share our work on. Mm-hmm. Another topic we can talk about, I don't know if it's now or later, but NFT space, right? So there's opportunities to get paid um, off of this work in more areas now. So uh, we're we're living in a, a great time for content creation. Um, so, yeah. We have to say that NFT conversation for later. Because <laughs> that's yeah. a whole other rabbit hole. Um, and yeah. I actually, I would love to do a live with someone that, you know, knows a little bit more about NFT so we can learn about it too as we have the conversation because if you don't know about NFTs, just Google it really quickly and then we don't have another live about that because we need to kind of jump into that space. But we did have one more question um, right here. I don't know if you can read it. it. says, I've been following you and CAV and Driven. Do you have any tips for upcoming for an upcoming photographer? Um, upcoming photographer is is vague almost in my mind. So I'm gonna kind of have a. I'm gonna try to give a tip off of my head, just off the top of my head, as in saying, continue to work on anything and everything. So if you're an upcoming photographer, at like the bare minimum, not bare minimum, but like, hey, you just picked up the, the camera. Try to shoot anything and everything. Try to find what you like shooting because. That's kind of going to, you know, pick your passion, pick what you really like and really want to learn more about it. So I'll say, hey, try shooting landscape photography, try doing sports photography, try doing, you know, portraits, black and white, because 
you know, down the road, if that's going to be something that you really want to get into, you don't like it. You don't want to learn more about it. You don't learn how to, you don't try to learn, uh, try to learn more about it and grow in it. So saying, hey, um, picking up foot, uh, sports photography for the first time, I knew it had to be so much more I had to learn, learn about settings, learn how to edit, learn how to get the right shot and get the right angles. So like, there's so much more you need to be able to learn in each particular niche. And, you know, niche, 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 whatever. Um, just like studio shooting, like shooting, a sh- shooting in a studio is so much more different than shooting out on a football field. Like it's completely different. It's almost on it's two different spectrums, but it's still photography. So it's like, hey, you know, what does it mean to be an upcoming, you know, you know, fashion photographers? Because you know, within the fashion world, you have to worry about details a little bit more than you would do sports. You know. Sports is moving a lot more faster, you know, than, you know, photography world. I mean, in the studio photography world. So it's like, hey, you know, uh, I just talked to one of my friends. She's like, hey, what was the shutter speed on this shot? And this was a football shot. You know, I was like at 8,000, you know, shutter speed. But then, you know, uh, if you shoot with the off-camera flash, you're shooting at like 200 shutter speed. And it's like there's a complete difference in like learning about you know, each particular sector of photography or, you know, in the creative world. So I'll say shoot everything. And then once you find something that you like, go deeper into it. Because like landscape photography, you shoot more on a tripod than you would do with just in your hand. So um, that's kind of like my vague answer there. What about you, Ro? Uh, First, I want to say shout out to the people that's holding it down in this live because um, not that numbers technically matter, but it's been a consistent number out there. So that's been dope to see that people yeah. are really tuning in and watching yeah, and taking something from this. So um, shout out to you for, for having this and then shout out to the people that are in here and, and gaining some knowledge and just supporting. So mm-hmm. that, and then also the first thing I, I tell people when they reach out and they're like new to photography, I tell them to look up rule of thirds and I tell them mm-hmm. to look up the exposure triangle. Um, those are two things that are really fundamental when it comes to photography, regardless of what type of photography you want to do. And once you learn those, that's really like the, once you get that, it's like you, (laughs) you ever think about playing video games and like you unlock to this next level. Like when you get those down, you unlock yourself into a new level. And like with rule Mm -hmm. of thirds, it becomes natural. Whereas you instinctually, frame your shots up with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And then with exposure triangle, I mean, that's something that you're always fluctuating with as new cameras come out and so forth. Mm -hmm. They have better ISO ranges, you know, shutter speeds go higher, Mm -hmm. different things like that, um, depending on the lenses you have. So YouTube should be your best friend to learn all these different things about photography. Mm -hmm. People, again, people think about like, oh, I want to get the opportunity. I want to get the opportunity. But in that meantime, right, I call it active patience. What are you doing Mm. in that meantime while your opportunity is still brewing to be ready when it comes? Because, like, I I, I go back to that came from college, bro. I was in college, and I was seeing people get opportunities, and I was starting to get a few opportunities. But I stopped going to parties, and I started spending my weekends either working, you know, and working in photography, videography, or Mm -hmm. learning. So I was shooting events or I was on YouTube learning stuff, right? And that's active patience. It's like, what can you do now while you're staying patient for your opportunity? What are you doing to be prepared when that opportunity comes? I remember when I first started shooting with a speed light. Like, that's Mm -hmm. a whole different thing too, right? When you're using the speed light, depending on the room you're in, shooting the bounce and the flash off of certain things to get what you want. Bro, I learned the other day, now, like a, a month of, before I moved to, uh, out of Minnesota, I did some headshots and mm-hmm. I had I had looked up on YouTube how do you because I had packed up all my lighting gear. All I had mm-hmm. was my speed light. So I was like, OK, that how is. do I shoot a headshot with just a speed light? Yeah. And they showed me how to shoot with a speed light and I did it. And it's probably one of the best headshots I've taken. So it's like, bro, you can learn so much. And there's so much to learn about photography that. Um, yeah have that active patience and just keep keep learning if anything you can keep learning so that's what i was no, saying I, I saw someone uh dropped in hey first of all, before i even get to that that was a dope in regards to active patience i never 
seeing someone put all of that into just two words of active patience. Like you, you always hear about, you know, some type of phrase or term, but, you know, being able to put it in those two words of active patience, I've, I've never heard that before. Appreciate it. Um, someone said, hey, look for a mentor who can help you as well. Yes, that's that's a good thing. And also about, hey, having just one mentor, um, you know, you could always have multiple mentors or have different sectors, um, you know, because there's so many different things that everyone knows. There's no, like, one fits, you know, one thing fits all type of thing when it comes to photography or any of the creative space to say, hey, don't forget creativity is in this. Like, hey, there's no formula to create the, mm -hmm. the perfect picture because it's just what we see out of our eyes but rules of third kind of help you kind of you know shape a box but at the same time you know if you see a picture that does fit outside of a rules of third mm -hmm. hey take that picture and you know because you like it that's what makes it a good picture you know not i mean unless you get paid you know for it to take a picture and make it look right. like a certain way but hey don't forget this is still a creative space so it's okay to draw outside the box, you know, or do something that is a little different. Hey, you know, because you see a lot of pictures that are, you know, really, really sharp, let us, let's bring down the shutter, you know, to make it a little blurry. It might be an artistic style that I might not like, but you like it, and that's what makes it a good picture to you. So um, that was that was dope, bro. Um, I saw uh, – we saw some more questions popping in here. Oh, yeah, we, I just brought this up about rules of third. Does rules does the rule of third change based on the subject? I'll let you since you brought it up for starters. What would you say to that question? Um, I think it could, like you said, rule of third is more so of a framework, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, if you if you have so this screen right here, you draw two mm -hmm. lines in the middle, and then two lines across, and those dots and those four corners of the middle box is basically where you want your subject to be when you're shooting. Um, and there's another one that's like an additional one where it's like a circle that goes around like this or something. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's like a complex effect of rule of thirds where it's like mm -hmm. you have um, leading lines or you have diff different yeah. things going on. Um, I don't know if the subject matters for rule of third because it depends, right? I know that yeah. one thing too is, for example, um, one thing I think about, because I learned this from, like, interviews, but, like, you want them looking to the open side, typically. Yeah. Like, if I'm doing an interview, if I'm talking at you like this, and, and the space is over All here. open space, yeah. Right. You want to be face. I want to be this way, and, like, speaking that way. Yeah. So, um, different things like that matter. Like, if, if the subject has a face, or if the car is, you know, pointed this way, you want yeah. that leading, you want that open yeah. side on the, uh, that, that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, I guess it depends on the subject, but it's more of just a guideline. And yeah. if, uh, like you said, with the creation thing, all of that, YouTube and type it in. Like, look it up on yeah. YouTube. That'll definitely give you more information um, and visuals as well. Got it. And I also, um, I made a list of, I need to update it, but I made a list of all the YouTube videos that I watched to kind of help me get started or just like, some things I still go back to use, but I made a list. It's in the link in my bio, but I made a list of all the YouTube. I call it, uh, um, I think it's called like K3 Links to Success because I was like, yo, we just started from YouTube. So I just copied and pasted all my YouTube links that I used and I just put it in like a PDF that you can click on. It's, it ranges from, you know, editing to learning about your camera. Oh, that's the point I want, learning about your camera. That's a tip for any starter photography, photographer or creative. I would say, yeah, creative is, you know, learn the most you, you can about the tool or the equipment that you have at your at your disposal. Because people shoot a film, which is like some, you know, old time camera. But, you know, you learn so much about the camera itself and how it works that when you do get that $5,000 camera, you know exactly what to do. Because if you don't know how to, you know, change your settings on a $200 camera, you probably, you know, well, not change your settings, but learn how to use, like, your rules of thirds or, you know, understanding exposure, whether your ISO affects your shutter speed and your shutter speed affects your your, um, your f-stop, then that $5,000 camera is not going to do the work for you, too. So I would say whatever camera you have, whatever equipment or tools or paintbrush that is in your hand right now, try to do as much work as you can until it's time for that level up and say, hey, 
I can no longer do what I want it to do. So now I need to level up because it's like, hey, I wanted to level up thinking I could get a, a better picture, but the whole time I didn't understand shutter speed. So, hey, let me understand shutter speed to the most I can and saying, hey, now when I ask Travis, I say, hey, how do I get my picture? Um, and he says, oh, you need a shutter speed of 3,000. And my shutter speed on my, my camera I have now only goes to 1,000. Then I understand now, oh, okay, I do need to level up because now I'm able to understand where I am now and where my equipment is at. But say, hey, I can do just about the same amount of work and great quality with the camera. Because I shot most of my my work on a T6i, which is the beginner stages camera for Canon. And people was like, hey, you know, what camera, you know, what are you using? I'm like, uh, I rented this lens and I still use this old body. <laughs> like, So that's my tip for um, beginner photography, photographers or creatives. Um, I know we have some other questions. Um, thoughts on, was it a loose goat stock? I do not understand that question, Dirty Roots. Um, do you understand? Do you see that question? On, on lost, lost goats doc. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's a documentary, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. You brought up rules of third. I'm on a tangent a little bit uh -huh. while we go to the next question. As in watching, learning about the BTS of movies helped me understand rules of third because a lot of movies, a lot of films use rules of third that you can actively see in a movie so you know whether someone's doing a monologue and someone's talking in the camera you can tell exactly where um you know that subject is lined up right um i'm, I'm looking up this um that question yeah right. but i'm not sure water law is that on espn water Walter L O O no, oh, L Eos Walter L -L Eos I think he's a photographer I believe yeah um uh, I haven't seen that but I may have to check it out for real I'm not yeah I think I've heard of his ESPN name Girls. before um well you dropping some game on us today um, yeah shout out yeah I think I, hold up I should have show a picture of this ESPN goes yeah. All right, we have one more question before we wrap up, too. Uh, will there be a photograph meetup or photo challenge coming up soon? I have, from us? I have not thought of I guess from us, because uh, I haven't thought about one. And plus, we're in different different cities, so a meetup would be kind of challenging for our different, you know, groups. But a challenge wouldn't be bad. I mean... I want to be a bad idea, like a fall challenge, because I mean, right. I know for me, I want to do more studio work. Um, right. I'm, I want to do some. I want to start doing some more headshots. I want to do some Got more uh, just studio work and start building some clientele for that. Uh, so yeah, I I I, tech, I typically I don't even really do like the the nationwide challenges and stuff. Yeah, me neither. Um, Photo meetups and stuff are dope. I've definitely yeah. been to a couple of those, and I think those are awesome. Um, but like you said, I think I think a challenge is good though sometimes. But when I challenge, I don't like you said. Like you have, you know, um, community over competition. Like, yeah, I'm not competing with nobody. Like, yeah. I, I think I forgot where I heard this from, but it was the other day um, about. I think it was on Ash Cash. He had an interview, and they were talking about. Uh, Every day you should compete. You know, the only person you should be competing with is yourself. Like, right. can you be better than you were yesterday? Yeah. Um, and I definitely have ingrained that in my mind. Mm -hmm. To, I don't even, you know, I look at other people's work and I can admire it and, and appreciate it and so forth. But I mm -hmm. never sit there and be like, even this, bro. I'm gonna drop this too right quick. There's been people that I've seen that either have gotten opportunities that I wish I had or this, this, and that. And, like, I feel like their work isn't, you know, isn't as good or, or, or could be better. Yeah. And that's a natural reaction or feeling or instinct, right? But some people hold on to those things and, like, Yo, I need to be in – I should be in that position. Like, I should have got that opportunity. Yeah. And then they never realize, like, you don't know what that person went through to get that opportunity. You don't know what's being done in their life where they're supposed to be there for that reason. Right. And then 
you also don't realize, like, well, when my opportunity comes, just because I'm good at it, there could be somebody else that's technically better, exactly. right, or whatever. So it's like all you can focus on is is support everybody else in their things. And, right. and like you said, too, you can reach out to those people and ask them questions instead of being, like, mad that they got the opportunity. Right. If they're nice, they might tell you how they got the opportunity or there may be something in their photography that you could learn from. Yeah. Um, let me throw one more thing out there, too, when you're talking hey, about the ahead, camera, bro. right? Two things, right? When you're talking about the camera, right? People will be like, oh, what camera you use? Because I'm going to buy that because I need one. Yeah. When people ask me, I'm always telling them, like, well, it depends on what you're using it for, all that stuff. Yeah. Like you said as well, learning it. But also, you could be using the camera you have to get the business side of things going. Because you could use that camera mm-hmm. to make the money to buy your next camera. So, like, exactly. if you got a camera now, but all you do is is just shoot for Instagram and, like, you're not working on your business side of it to, to get paid for the work, that camera in your hands could be the one that buys your next camera, you know, for yep. you. So, um, just things to think about for people. And one more, sorry, is sometimes the camera you have is what you need, right? So, if you got an iPhone or, or any type of phone that has a camera on it, that may be the camera you have to use. Like, a perfect example, mm-hmm. if you go on my page, I went to the Xavier Omar concert in L.A. It was his mm-hmm. first first concert in 13 months, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to apply for a credential, but I didn't know how. My first, mm-hmm. second week out here. And I brought my phone. And I got some kind of cool content just using yeah. my phone. So it's like, whatever you have is what you got to use. Um, so, yeah. Hey, you dropping gems today, bro. So same to you, bro. Same to you. Hopefully, people were taking some notes. Uh, I think we're about to wrap up. Uh, we definitely have to do another live. I know we want. I want to talk about NFTs and what it means for creators because I think it's still an opportunity for people that don't know about NFTs to get into it um, and then be able to just kind of you know add another level to uh, you know to their game. Brought you to move your LA. We brought you a move to LA. You guys will have to see the beginning of the live because uh, we did cover, um, you know, Travis's move to LA in the beginning of this live. So I know Travis. I know you've kind of talked about this like three or four times in within the last week. Yeah. Um, but that this recording will be up on Instagram, so you'll be able to see it. Um, do you have any last words in regards to the slide before we wrap up? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Another shout out is just shout out to IG because I remember the days of you got 30 minutes on IG Live and that's it. <laughs> We've been on here like an hour and a half, bro. And yeah. It's been dope to uh, just connect with you and, and talk. Um, if anybody else has any other questions for me directly, feel free to shoot me a DM. Um, follow both of us because we're always dropping gems and creating content and mm-hmm. there to help you all. Like if y'all got questions, feel free to ask. Um and yeah, let's just keep grinding, bro. I, I appreciate that 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 mic'd up video you did for me and some photos as well. Like that was dope. And uh, yeah, man, let's just keep going, bro. We got a lot to do, and uh, let's keep it going, bro. Yes, sir. Now I appreciate you hopping on. It's like one of those things where we always like dropping, we always DMing each other something that we like. So just being able to have a conversation and have you know people to be able to you know. Uh, share this with because I mean, well, it was like a million dollars worth of game and be able to just, you know, share it, you know, and we're still learning. So we're not saying, hey, we are the best, but we have certain experiences that we've, you know, we want to share. So, uh, now nah, thank you and thank you all that was able to tune in and stay tuned in this whole hour and a half because mm-hmm. I didn't think we were here for an hour and a half, right. but uh, definitely got to get back into it. And, you know, I want to get back on live a little bit more. So, for sure, bro. For sure. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Peace out, guys.